Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Northboro. If you haven't seen this show before, my name is Art Bergeron. I work at a firm called Myrick O'Connell. Uh, there are 70 of us, biggest firm outside of Boston. That's my ad. Um, and so because there are so many lawyers, everybody gets to do what they like doing. And I like doing elder law. That's all I do. But this show is not about elder law. It's about Frank and Mary. If you've been to a presentation of mine, you know I always talk about Frank and Mary and their kids, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. And Frank and Mary's goal is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if you're in Northboro, that means here. That doesn't mean with your kids in San Diego or even in, you know, Boston. It's here. And so the point of the show is to help you understand the people you need to know and the programs you need to know about if you want to stay right here in Northboro for the rest of your life. So, of course, I don't know that because I live far away in Marlboro. <laughs> so I got this great co-host that was actually recommended to me by our guest, by Kelly Burke, about a year ago. And she's been great because she knows everybody. Anita Hagspiel. <laughs> and by the way, this is Anita's last show for the season because she's going to some far, to South North, bro. No. <laughs> to some, some to southern. Florida, to Florida, to Naples, Florida. Yeah, South North. Bro. So, so she's going to be away for a while. So Kelly and I are talking about who, whether we just leave that seat empty for the next five months or whether we fill it with somebody. So Anita... We're going to talk to Kelly about some stuff? We sure are. Some That's very great. exciting things. And what are we talking about today? Today we're going to talk about something that we're very excited about. And Kelly, our director of the Northboro Senior Center, is our spearhead. <laughs> um, it's about strategic planning, yeah. rebranding, yeah. and having a logo for the Northboro Senior Center. And is that going to be t something that says 25%? Is that why you made me with a button that says, <laughs> well, no, gee, or is that going what to, does 25% mean, mean, Kelly? I'm really glad you asked that question. And <laughs> what an intro, what an intro, okay. And yeah. I actually have the numbers that, that will define that. That will define it. So um, every so often I ask Andy Dowd, who's our town, town clerk, what's the 60 plus population? Because we know from demographics yeah. that across the, the world really, that the people who are 60 and over are um, a much bigger demographic than anything else. As you know, yeah. a few years ago in Massachusetts, the population switched and there were more people that are over 60 than under 20. And that's continuing to see, to, the projections are going in that and direction. That keeps, and that's gonna keep going that's for a That's gonna while. keep going, yeah. yes. Yep, the boomers, yeah. you know, uh, all those uh, names if you've heard people being called. Here we are. Uh, <laughs> and here I'm, we are. I'm there too, so it makes three of us. She looks awfully young to She be sure in, does. In so, but, but we'll pass So, that, so the, the years of birth for that are 1946 to 1962 really defines boomers. Um, so when I asked Andy, I said I'd like to know how many people um, in town are 60 plus and I do this pretty much a couple times a year to see what the numbers are and how many people are living in Northboro as a whole. So uh, these are numbers as of July mm -hmm. of 2019. Real data. Um, real yeah. data and the total population is 14,658 for Northboro yeah. and of that 25% yeah. are 60 plus. In other words, 3,704 wow residents of Northboro are 60 plus. So it really does show that, that it's a growing number. And the reason that we started to talk about strategic plan was that we want to be ready for 2025. That's the year that we've chosen that we're projecting out to. We know yeah. that these numbers are going to keep on increasing. We want to be poised as a senior center and as a friends group for that, that growth and for, the, for those people and, and making sure that we're providing everything necessary to those people that are over 60 in our community. Which is great, it's which just is great. great. And yeah. you know, I, I can't say enough, and I say this a lot, but the Friends of the Northboro Senior Center is kind of the PTO of, um, of the Senior Center. So they're our fundraising arm. They're so supportive. And when they heard me talking about strategic plan, knowing, knowing that that was something the Council on Aging wanted to work on as well, yeah. They were, you know, Anita and all of her board members unanimously like all said that they wanted to support this. And, um, and so financially they are doing that. So we don't have that in our budget. So, um, and of so course that's exactly the kind of stuff that's hard to get into the budget. Absolutely. It, cause, because it's a long-term plan. <laughs> yes. And so it's competing with all of the, all of the immediate needs. So it ends, exactly. always it ends up being kind of the last thing talked about in the agenda and, oh, we'll talk about it next month. Right. Right. right, as opposed to really, that's that's the great thing about the right. friends, right? Yeah, it's it's it, fabulous, and right. that's really what their mission is too: is to support the senior center and for things that the budget just doesn't cover. So a perfect example of it, you know, they in the past they've supported staff positions that weren't in the budget either, 
And yeah. so every every time I've asked the friends for something, they've been there, and it's been great. And um, you know, I can't say enough <laughs> positive things about that. And so, how's it? How's it? What are you thinking? How's it going to work? So in the summer, yeah. we started the process. Yeah. Um, I was fortunate to know Barry Atkin, who is a consultant in marketing. Mm -hmm. um, MCOA, Mass Councils on Aging, which is our membership organization, mm -hmm. has used Barry so many ways. She has written um, a marketing tool book for, for, the, for MCOA. So all 351 oh. towns um, in, the, in the state are able to use this because of Barry's work. Um, so Barry guided us you know, first on the strategic plan. The first thing that we really accomplished was the mission. So we have a new mission for the Senior Center, mm -hmm. and I'll read that mission so I don't miss anything. Right. As the hub for all aspects of healthy aging, the mission of the Northboro Council on Aging slash Senior Center is to enrich and enhance the lives of older adults. And we really felt like we, we talked to staff, we had staff input, we had Council on Aging input, yeah. and the friends, um, and then we've put together a small working group to, to work on the strategic plan. We really felt the hub was a good symbol of what we're trying to do. A hub and when you think about a hub as something that's in motion, something that's active, and, and we are that. A hub, you know, you also think of a, a wheel, which has a lot of spokes. And we do have a lot of spokes, too. We have a lot of outreach that we're trying to do. You know, historically, we've done outreach to um, older adults who are, for, who are Chinese or Indian that we may not have seen in the senior center, but we want to include them. Um, most recently, this is our second year working on a grant for um, LGBTQ, um, adults and, and there may be people in that community that don't feel like you know is the is the senior center going to be welcoming to me the answer is yes yeah, but and at this point they may to... not feel that but so you're really so just as with the with those other populations yes. you're really reaching out so that they can they can be kind of a bridge it is really a good a good analogy yeah you know, and then and then of course yeah. I don't have to tell you about the dementia friendly work that we've yeah. done we were partners um, with that and now we have daybreak so we really are reaching out to you know those folks that may have been isolating because of having that um, determination of being having dementia or their caregivers so as you know i can't help but put a plug in for daybreak which is really respite for the caregiver it's three hours of really good meaningful activities for the people um, that have dementia and it, I, it's going off the charts in in you know, all three communities marlboro um, Hudson and North Bro. And I think not because it's not just respite for the caregiver, right. but it's, it's this it's a social time it is. For, for folks who've, who have got memory problems. Right. And it's kind of a great thing. If you're together it's, with a bunch of other people absolutely. with memory problems, it's yep. not a stigma, it's a joke. It's kind of like it kind of, it's kind and of they, fun. And they, you know, right? Christine, who is who's the um, facilitator in right. North Bro and in Marlboro, and then Lisa in Hudson. They put together a great curriculum, as you might say, yeah. uh, you know, real meaningful activities that people enjoy and want to come back every week. So I, it's a win-win. So, so I'm curious, though, because once again, I haven't been part of that process. What is your, what is your sense kind of going into this? Obviously, you have a, had a real interest in doing this, which is the reason why you were talking about it, which is the reason why the, they're backing it, right? Mm -hmm. what, what, it, what is your sense? Is your sense that that projecting into the future from what has happened over these years that facility-wise you're okay, but it's a really, it's a programming issue, or is the population changing and you're thinking about, you know, it isn't just an expansion thing it, or in terms of programming, but it's other kinds of programs? Because you're not only there and, and have really kind of driven that from before you moved, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Right? But you're also really active at the state level, so mm -hmm. you're seeing what other people are doing. We were, right. we were talking about some faraway place before the beginning of the show, <laughs> and, 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 and because you're just constantly seeing initiatives, and you're really yeah. interested, right? So, yes. Yeah. So, what what is your sense of that? Well, I think I think everything that you talked about. You know, um, one is you know the demographics, and and really what the what the demographics show us are that people are living longer and healthier lives and that's a great thing it's a positive thing and we just want to make sure that we're here and offering all the services and the resources that we can um, to, to meet that and um, and it may be that that people as, as you go through people that are 60 plus or even in their 50s we have people that are over 100 that are using the senior center as well And when you think of that wow. programmatically there's much different 
you know, interests that people have at different stages of their lives. So mm. it's programming for people, you know, in, maybe in their 50s to over 100. So, that, so there's, so that's, you know, it, it's interesting and, and, you know, I'm, I'm passionate about all of these things. And the other thing we've talked a lot about in strategic planning is ageism. You know, ageism exists. And is it, is it a point of making some of those language changes to, um, but my favorite quote right now is from Ashton Applewhite. Mm -hmm. And she has a blog and she's, a, she's an author for ageism. And, and her quote really resonates with me. She says, ageism is prejudice against your future self. Oh, that's very so good. it really is. It really is something that's to think about, good. and and um, and you know, you know, dementia friendly, age friendly is yeah. something that's very popular now across the state as well. Um, and and age friendly is really not looking just at at older adults. It's looking what's good for a three year old is good for an eighty plus year old right. in terms right. of you know sidewalks or accommodations and things like that. So uh, so I'm excited about the whole. Aging wow. process, really. To try to get to that level would be quite something. It, I, you yeah. know, you kind of you, you kind of notice it. Well, of course, I'm going to turn 70 in January, right? So, right? and and you, you, the the some of the standard lines. Well, you look terrific for your age. Mm. <laughs> you know, you know, you you look so healthy, right? Which which builds in these assumptions about what I'm supposed to look like mm -hmm. because of that age, right? right? And the notion of defining things in terms of age instead of in terms of health. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. That's a real challenge. Yeah, it is a real it, challenge. And it's not going to be like it's going to change overnight because no. you look at culturally, societally, you, you know, looking at commercials on TV, it's all about getting rid of wrinkles and, you know, all of those kind of things. But I think it's a process like everything else. And I think, you know, they, they, that we have to kind of forge ahead with that because it really does, you know, that people are working longer than they used to. You know, there's right. no set retirement age like it used to be. Right. And, and figuring so, that piece out. I, yeah. It's funny, I find, once again, I find myself, because mm -hmm. I'm talking to the other partners, so we have a few lawyers who are actually, this one ter a terrific labor lawyer is a little over 80 now, mm -hmm. right? But, but it, but it leads to those kinds of questions, because, it, because for folks who are trying to figure that out, it, it's, e it's easier to pick an age and mm -hmm. to say above that age, you're just gonna, because then you don't have to have any of those hard conversations, mm -hmm. right? If a person, of whatever age starts having problems, right? And it and it and starts having it, it starts being difficult for them to do the work, right? So the question if you're if you're no longer gonna just have those kinds of lines, right. then what's the alternative? Mm -hmm. And and what are the and there must be, and there clearly are alternatives, just like it was easy to just dismiss everybody that had a cognitive issue, well they just got cognitive issues. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, you just put them in a home, you know, or you put them far away or whatever. Or you stay at home. Or you at least keep them out of school mm -hmm. because, you, oh God, they couldn't mix in with all the other kids because it's gonna hold them back. Right. And so that switched, mm -hmm. but then what? And, 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 and I think, it, just my own sense, some of the best examples of how to deal with things came out of that, the yeah. tremendous success of dealing with a whole variety of people who had some issues mm -hmm that not only their lives are now better, but everybody else's life is better. Every kid coming out of high school who's dealt with kids with, who have issues is right. a better kid right. growing up to be an adult. No, right? and I, I, think, I think part of what drove this as well is I've always had a feeling that what I want for the senior center, as well as all the activities and programs and all that stuff that's great there, yeah. is also outreach. So we have Jocelyn who can talk to people about so many issues. So I think that really my passion for that is that I would like everybody in Northborough, whatever they're thinking about in terms of aging, yeah. the first place they're going to think about is a senior center. The they're going to call the senior center, visit the senior center, get on our web page. You know, so that's really what I want it to be, that you got an aging issue, you're not even going to think twice. You're going to come to the senior center. Which means that you're covering a whole variety of, a tremendous variety of aging issues. Right, and we're talking to, you know, adult children of, of older adults. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's really a broad spectrum. And we talk a lot about intergenerational things, which we have a great relationship with Algonquin. You know, a lot of kids that come up and do volunteer work, and never in the 10 years that I've been there have we had any kind of an issue. These kids are great. You know, they're, they're, they bring so much to the table. They come and help with computers and laptops, and they're here, they're in the office, they're in the bistro, you know, yes. and, uh, yeah, and, and so I guess, you know, when you talk about changing societal, um, 
you know the mores or whatever you're starting with those with those kids because what they're experiencing at the senior center you know is all that activity and and how valuable people are no matter what their age is right you know right and, and, and the more you can get those groups together the better and and that's a good point in terms of just skipping over the people in the middle because 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 <laughs> the younger ones right because, because, by the way, the people in the middle know nothing about technology compared Ex to the younger ones, right. Right? right? So to have them really coming in is actually, I was thinking about that as it relates to our shows, as it relates to our shows, because mm -hmm. I know that, that you know, the, the, it, is, it is assumed, although the cable companies will never tell you what the viewership is and what, 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 how it is constituted, that many of the viewers are seniors, mm -hmm. and that this is a great, a, vehicle, a great vehicle for seniors, which then leads to the question so how could it be a better vehicle for seniors? But then one of, the, one of the questions then is, so how many of those seniors know how to get to this channel, right? Mm -hmm. Just know how to get to it, or know how to download a, anything, mm -hmm. right? And, and isn't that, a, wouldn't that be a useful thing to have every senior know because then there's a vehicle, because the old vehicle is no longer there. You can't read the paper anymore, mm -hmm. right? You, you know, you have a, you have a version of, of your senior newsletter that you still send as well yes. as doing it online, but there's no, the Middlesex News, what's that? The Worcester Telegram, you know, so 10 years from now, there will be none of that. The print's gonna, just gonna be gone, and so the question is, without the cable station and, and, and knowledge of access to it, you will have no access to anything. You will not be able to be part of your community, right? Right, and but, that's what we want. But it's the notion of the senior center being that, being able to do all of those things. So, have you seen other places that, that have had particular programs that you said, ooh, that would be really interesting? Well, That's, just, yeah. just in what you were just talking about, there's a lot of talk and, and people in senior centers that are doing this that are bringing you know, technology in so that if, if somebody is homebound or can't make it to the senior center for one reason or another, they can be part of that presentation you know, by, oh. by using um, you know, virtual, <laughs> I guess, um, mm -hmm. technology, um, yep. and and you know, and even pro um, providing people who are homebound with iPads or something like that, so that they can stay in touch. And you know, I mean, I, I know my health insurance sent out a teledoc, you know, so that you can get on, you know, and FaceTime really with your your yeah. doctor and things a like that. A, t a teledoc. Teledoc. That's so. <laughs> What's that again? <laughs> Just What's so you that can, again, <laughs> honey? I don't get it. What? Just so you can, you know, have a face-to-face -face with your doctor. And uh, I haven't used it personally, right. but but I think all of that technology is out there, and you know, we want to embrace that as well. And um, and and really, like I said. I just want everybody in the Northboro community, no matter where they are in yeah. age, if they are that adult child, you know, in their 40s that says, well, you know, I live in, in San Diego, but I just came home to Northboro to see my mom and things have really changed over the last six months. What do I do now? It's a maze, as you know, yeah. all the services and resources. And Jocelyn, being that outreach coordinator, she knows what those resources are. She can right. help with getting through that maze. And to know that there's a one, that there's a one call that you can make. That's right. It's like that one portal that's going to get that, you to that, everything yeah. else. Yeah, and that's kind of that's the the way I. That would be my dream. That's as great. Far as that's, that, you know that people just think aging, they think the senior and center, and they just think the senior center. And in yeah. terms of providing that kind of technology, if it really becomes a community wide goal, then it's like every senior. You almost feel like. You know, like you, you really, it's your responsibility as a senior to mm -hmm. plug in and to kind of know right. how all of that stuff works and to not just, and not to just isolate that way. Right. I just, I was leaving the senior center to come up here. Yeah. There was a woman waiting for the, bus, for the van service. And I said, how was your program today? She said, it was great. And you know, it's just great being with the people and just, you know, and, and I said, that's exactly what I want to hear. And thank you for sharing that because that's exactly why we exist. Yes. You know, we are, we are a link to something that you need. And, you know, we, we, right, I went to an MCOA conference today and they were talking about um, nutrition being really something in Massachusetts. We're seeing now seniors that are um, really suffering because they don't, the, the nutrition insecurity, economic insecurity. Yeah. And that's something that's across Massachusetts, and MCUA now wants to have that as is you know one of the, one of our goals. I sit on their board as well, yep. and I, I think of the bistro. You know that that's really the bistro is there for that reason. If you're up going to a program at the senior center and you stop to have lunch, you're going to be sitting with seven or eight other people, and and having that 
that conversation and that social isolation is gone for that meal and, and, and you're, getting, you're getting a great meal, as and we know, a delicious and, meal. And in terms of kind of where that could go, it, interestingly, you've also got that industrial kitchen. So you, can, so you can actually use your kitchen as a, as a way of kind of teaching some of those seniors, you know, you can really cook like that. Yep, and we've done yes. things like that, cooking for one and, yep. and things like that, because it is, it is important. So really, yeah. your question, the it, sky's the limit. The you know, the limit. It, it just is really, and, and, and that's why I always ask for feedback. I want to know what people are looking for, um, for that reason, because we want to be there to support that. And so do you, in terms of timing, do you have a sense of how that's going to work? It's strategic plan-wise, yeah. um, 2025 is the year we're looking out to. And, um, and when do you want to be done with the planning process? The planning process, we're wrapping up the strategic plan itself, mm -hmm. getting our goals in order, our work plan for rolling it out so mm -hmm. that we can have, you know, as you know, a strategic plan is a working document. It's not something that gets completed, and put in a three-ring binder right. and up on the shelf. That's right. So we want to have something. The so good, right the now, good ones. The, the good, good ones. ones. The ones that you put, you put the money into and that you want to have something come right. out of. And so that we're looking for 2025. Um, the next phase that we're going into, I'm really excited about because we are going into the branding or rebranding. We don't have a logo. We've never had a logo at the Senior Center. We will have one now. And I think that will help too yeah. in terms of people are going to see, hopefully see that logo, see that tagline and think, oh yeah, I do have an aging issue and I know where to go. Right. Because it's not just the Senior Center. That's right. There's it's so some, much more. <laughs> right. <laughs> so. Right. It's something that's really special. Because yeah. isn't that the challenge, you know, so often it's just to get folks to be thinking of themselves as this group, That's right? right. Which, yeah. which also deals with kind of like, we were just doing, I was doing these presentations, I was talking about Frankie and Mary at 70 and then at 80 and then at 90. The most recent have been 90 because you're talking about Frank, Mary kind of, a, <clears throat> kind of more toward the end of her life. But at 70, we really talked about Frank and Mary as being, you need to be the volunteers mm -hmm. because kind of we're all in this together, right? And, and, and our kids are all working and they're all doing a million things and many of them are in San Diego or, you know, I got one in DC, I got one in Austin, Texas and one in Colorado Springs. <laughs> hey, look, they're not stopping by to help me with the groceries, right. you know? <laughs> so if, if seniors aren't helping seniors, right, it's not gonna get done. Yeah. So the notion of, the, of that senior center also as being the place that people are really thinking about the place, the window through which they're doing their volunteer things. Mm -hmm. You know, they're really helping. Oh, that's right. There's opportunities at the Senior Center for, for that as well. Right. And, and in many and ways, they're helping themselves because they're yeah. building that community. And they're certainly helping us because we are very, very reliant on volunteers. And we're working through Service Enterprise right now to do a volunteer program to make that even better so that it becomes something that, you know, is, is very important to the volunteer. We have a lot of people with longevity right a now. Service there. Enterprise? Service Enterprise. It's the Massachusetts um, Alliance for Volunteers as a State um, program. Oh. It's, it's associated um, on a national level with Points of Light. Yeah. Um, but they, they provide 16 hours of training and, and follow up and, and help in so many ways. And, and we've drawn so much from them already. And they are, they are looking for other nonprofits and senior centers to, um, to sign on for more trainings that they're, they're doing. I see. So. I see. So, so it's really to train uh, entities that, yes. are, that are providing a lot or working with a lot of volunteers just to exactly. make that in itself better and better. Exactly. That's and we're a really doing useful that too exercise. Because, yeah, it really is. And, you know, uh, it, when we did that, there's a, a ROV, which is how much a, a volunteer is worth really to your organization. Yeah. And when we did our numbers on that, we found that we have the equivalent of seven full-time staff within the, the volunteers that we have. In terms of the number and, of hours the, that they The number they of working. hours that they work and what their, their value is to the organization. It's phenomenal and, uh, you know, and another group that I can't thank enough are the volunteers. And that's pretty terrific. They keep us going. Because when you think about the pool, given the statistic that you just gave, right. if you're thinking <laughs> about that on the optimistic side, yes. the number of, vo of potential volunteer hours new potential volunteer hours that's showing up in Northboro every year right. as more of these people retire or, or at least go part-time and right. suddenly have this availability. Exactly. It's a huge pool. Right. And the only pool there is, right? right? Because that's among right. non-seniors, there are no more, because everybody's just killing themselves, just working. Oh, that's right. Yeah, no, it's wonderful for us. This is pretty terrific. It is. It's all so good. So is this really her, is this her idea, this whole thing? No. This is really. It takes a village, and believe really me, I, I am, I, I have so much help. special. I have a lot of help. I have a very good team of people. I have staff. I was thinking on the way in yesterday to work, 
you know, what I can say about my staff across the board and without 100% is they all give such great cu customer service. I have such a great team for that. And, and that's more than half the battle, right? You got the right people working yeah. in the environment. So yeah. I, I, I don't do anything on my own. I am surrounded by people that help me do all these things. So one of the things that we were talking about before the beginning of the show was, as, as we say, we're, um, 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 we're, I'm losing my co-host to South Northborough, so that we may be doing <laughs> some of these shows between now and May on aspects of this. I was just thinking, this might be a really yeah. interesting thing to do, to be mm -hmm. focusing on some of these different clusters right. of things that might be of real interest to people. Yeah, well, right? I, I'll, I'll, I'll end by saying that in all the rebranding and the logo, yeah. we're gonna unveil all that at our 10th anniversary. Which is? In March of 2020. Oh, we'll that's great. We'll have been in this building for 10 years. And, and so by that point, we're gonna, I'm gonna be able, a new button. There's gonna There'll be the logo button This will be a logo button The way button the numbers here. are going, the this logo is, button will be there. The logo yeah. button will and be there. And that will be unveiled at that at our party. And, um, and, and we know now in looking at our, our participation numbers that we have doubled the amount of people coming in from the fifth anniversary to our almost 10th anniversary. We've wow. doubled the numbers of people participating. So wow. as I know, as you know, as we all know, those numbers are gonna keep growing. They're gonna keep on so growing. So we have to keep up. <laughs> well, this is all a lot of fun. It was. Thank you very much. Our pleasure. Have a great time, Anita. Thank you very I'm much. Sure, I'm, sure, I'm sure South <laughs> Northboro will be just as you've hoped it, you know, but maybe we can have do a call-in show and you can call in or something. Well, she does that. Oh, I maybe, we can, do. maybe we can do one of those face, one of those she face does times. that. Yes? We, we do that she every does all monthly this stuff. meeting. At the I'm, friends, I'm FaceTiming in. Anita's right there. Oh, uh, that's great. <laughs> that's great. So thank you for these. This, this has been a great year. Thank you very much, happy Kelly. Holidays. Thank you. Thank you for yes, having me. Yes, and happy holidays. Um, and we'll see you on the next installment of uh, Frank and Mary here in Northboro.